Hey guys, today I'm going to teach you how to replace the spindle on your race face 30mm cinch crank set in order to fit it to a different type of frame, such as a fat bike. The tools you require for this operation are a 2mm Allen key, an 8mm Allen key, a mallet, and a 16mm or 5 8 inch Allen key. Race face also makes this adapter that allows you to use your 8mm Allen key as a 16mm substitute. You'll also require a race face spindle kit, which consists of the appropriate spindle and spacers for your chosen setup, as well as a crank bolt and a puller cap. For more information on which spindle or spacers you require for your conversion, please go to raceface.com. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove the crank set from your current bike. So, we'll remove the chain, the chain ring. We then take our eight millimeter Allen key and we locate that into the drive side crank bolt. And we're then gonna loosen that off. And this is a self-extracting crank bolt, so as we turn, the crank will back off from the spindle. We just turn that until the crank comes away. We put that to one side. And now we're gonna remove the non-drive crank from the frame. As we remove this, take care that this dust cap seal for the BB doesn't get lost. That will come off. Okay. And now we're going to remove the non-drive crank and spindle assembly from the frame. So a little bit of side-to-side -side movement. There it is. Okay, so here's what we've removed from our old bike. And the next step we're going to do is we're going to change the spindle in the non-drive crank. So we take this non-drive crank assembly the old spindle installed, and we're using our 16 mil Allen key, or 5 8 inch, and we're going to remove the current bolt that's installed. So the best way to do this is to just rest the crank lightly on a soft surface, such as a wooden bench, and loosen off that crank bolt. We're then going to back it all the way out. Do the last little bit with our fingers. And there's your non-drive crank bolt. Make sure you get the washer there that comes with it and set this aside in a safe place. We then take from our spindle conversion kit the crank bolt, the smaller crank bolt with the washer, and we're going to install that into the crank arm. Using the eight millimeter Allen key to tighten that one down. Next step is to take the puller cap, which again uses a 16 mil or 5 8 inch Allen key. And that needs to be tightened down too. With the uh, puller cap here, it just needs to be 20 newton meters. So not really, really, really tight, just snug. So again, we're gonna tighten that down. That should be enough. Now that that's installed, we can use the 8mm key to back the spindle out of the crank by unfreading that smaller crank bolt we just installed. And as you can see, the spindle is coming out of the non-drive crank arm. And there it is. Next step is remove that second dust cap from the spindle. So you should now have two dust caps that are the same you've removed from your original setup. At this point, it's also a really good idea to reset the preloader on your cinch non-drive crank. So we take our two millimeter Allen key and we just open up that gap in the preloader and we're fretting that clockwise until it tightens down against the non-drive arm. Also at this point, if you are planning on running a different chain ring or spider on your new bike setup, you'll want to change this. So please see the uh, technical video on how to change a cinch 
a chain ring if that's something you need to do. The next step is to install our new spindle into our crank arm. At this point you have a choice. You can leave the current setup we have in the non-drive arm, which is a, a crank bolt that uses an 8mm key with a puller cap, which is a self-extracting feature, or you can choose to go back to your non-puller crank bolt. That'll just save you a little bit of weight if that's something you feel is important to you. Uh, you can see at this point that both the non-drive and the drive side cranks both have self-extracting crank bolt assemblies installed. So this is probably the easiest setup for you if you plan on changing your spindle regularly. Okay, so the next step is to install our new spindle into our non-drive crank arm. You can see here the new spindle I'm installing is longer than the previous spindle. So the first thing we do is grease the interface. And then using the 8mm Allen key, we're going to install the new spindle into the non-drive crank arm. So you're going to try and hold these two pieces perpendicular to each other as you tighten so that the threads can find each other more easily. Sometimes a good idea to just rest that on the bench as you do it. There we go. And we're going to torque that bolt into 50 newton meters. Okay, the next step is to, if you have any spacers that need to be installed on the non-drive side for your new crank setup, you need to install those now. So check online at raceface.com for the correct spacer setup for your chosen bike setup that you're trying to achieve. So in this case we're going to install this one spacer here, and then after that we're going to take the dust caps that come with the BB on the bike that you're, inst uh, you're installing the crank to now. I'm going to put that on. It's worth noting that uh, some dust caps are different sizes to others, so make sure you use the ones for the BB you're putting your new crank set into. Okay, and that's the non-drive setup ready to go. Okay, so here's uh, our new bike, in this case a fat bike, with the uh, appropriate race face 30 millimeter BB installed. We're going to take our non-drive crank assembly, and just slide that through the frame until it goes all the way in. And again, just check that there's no drag once your crank is installed in your BB. Okay, the next step is to install the uh, appropriate BB dust cap onto the drive side. So we put that on. And then we're going to install any drive side spaces that are required for this particular setup. So in this case, just this spacer here. We're then going to take our drive side cinch crank assembly and using the 8mm Allen key again, we're going to install it. A good idea to just put some grease on the interface before you put that on. And again, as we put this on, we just want to make sure that we're keeping the crank arm nice and perpendicular spindle and we're trying to find the uh, splines on the, on the spindle, make sure they're kind of partially engaged and that'll make it easy to find the threads and tighten that drive side crank arm. And again, 50 newton meters is the correct crank bolt torque. Once that's tightened down all the way, you just want to push the drive side crank all the way in and use a mallet for that if you need to. Okay, so the last stage of this uh, process is to preload our new BB. So we take our lock ring and just using our fingers, we're going to thread that until it snugs down and preloads our BB bearings. That's all that's required, just finger tight. And then we take our two millimeter hex key and we locate 
the split in the preloader ring and the crank and the little bolt there. And we're just going to tighten that up till the gap closes. No further than that. That's all that's required. And there you go. There's a fully installed, converted cinch crank set ready to go on your new bike.